what's going on everyone? It's David Palmer, The Leo King, and this is a new series I'm going to be bringing out on YouTube called Behind the King. The reason why I'm bringing out this form of content is one, it's been eight years. I just realized this on my Jupiter return today, December 25th of 2019, that the YouTube channel, which is known as The Leo King, it actually used to be David Palmer Astrology, uh, is eight years old. It was December 7th of 2011 when this channel came out and I've been getting so many messages about wanting to know more about my personal life, what it's more like, especially just the personal life of an astrologer and what, it, what it's like and some of the stories about it and just even in my personal space, you know, a lot of people like really got, I don't know, I don't want to say the word obsessed, but they were just like, stoked to see my altar. It's like they want to know what it's like behind the scenes, whether that's going to be here at my house or here at the High Vibe TV studios. You know, it's like all my content for so long is, is it's all this deep work from major lectures to, of course, daily video horoscopes, weekly horoscopes, Astro Buzz. I mean, I, I don't even want to go into it. <laughs> There's so many, you know, they're all on my playlist. You can see them. But it's like this Jupiter return for me was like, okay, it's time to also add a lot of the story to it all. And so on this first episode, I thought I'd start it from my house, number one. Like this is where I live right now, Marina Del Rey, California, in LA. And you know, it's been quite a journey just being an astrologer. I'll just kind of start with the basics here on this first episode, because I just really want people to know that being an astrologer and especially when it comes to like being a light worker or stepping into you know this spiritual realm for work, you think like um, one. Do you live like some crazy like witchy like kind of life in the background? It's like, well, I guess yeah and no. There's like kind of both sides, and I, I want to show all that through this series. I also want to show people just you know what it's like as an astrologer preparing for. Like a good example is in 2020, uh, February 8th, I'm on the astrology panel for Conscious Life Expo. I've done talks there before. I actually did the astrology panel there in 2014, and then I did a talk there and lecture in 2015. Um, and then I go, and then it's funny, this year I'm doing it with Susan Miller, um, gosh, oh, uh, uh, Deborah Silverman. Um, there's a bunch of good people that are on the panel, so it's going to be really fun. So it's like, you know, I'm going to be showcasing stuff like that and like the behind the scenes stuff and like how I go about it, you know, like especially like which do I look at books, which books, you know, it's like I want to do a show about like here, these are the books that I got. This is what I got here. And you know, people want to see what's like being especially, you know, it's a little different. I would say that my astrology stories kind of unique just in the sense that it's like I'm not just doing horoscopes. You know, I've got the whole television aspect too and being a celebrity astrologer, people think, okay, so what, you just do celebrities? It's like, no, it's like my number one goal in this life is to allow the astrologer to be looked at at the table in society. Not just so much as a celebrity because I think people take the term celebrity, I don't know, so seriously. I, and I use it just because it's been a very good way to, you know, realize that celebrity to me means a star, like a star of what you do. And I feel that the astrologer itself just really hasn't gotten the credit it deserves in society. And so it's been the last 10 years of doing it on television. And believe it or not, I was doing astrology on TV before YouTube. So it was kind of a weird thing. YouTube for me was actually like, the space in where I wasn't trying to go. I, I, you know, it was all about television and, you know, especially in 2010 when it aired, remember I filmed uh, True Beauty in 2009, September, October 2009, in those months. Um, but, you know, it was the whole point to get the content of astrology and own the role of an astrologer in the media as like, hey, I'm not questioning this, why are you kind of attitude. And so I, the last place I thought in the world I would go would be YouTube. But my life ended up to where I ended up homeless with my laptop doing it. And so it was a very um, humbling experience, especially after you 
you know, I did a lot of reality shows in the 2000s. And then, you know, you have this big one in ABC, you're everywhere, and nobody liked me, believe it or not. Like, uh, I, got a really, I got really bad reviews. Everybody thought I was like the worst person on the show. They, they edited me to look like my astrology was, like nobody wanted to get the readings using clips from other episodes of people's reactions. And it was sad because all the people on the show really enjoyed the readings and they're all friends of mine now. And you know, it was like, they all thought that was BS and so did I. But it's like, you know, astrology has always been this, I don't know, kind of like ugly duckling. And the whole purpose for me behind the scenes in my life, of course it's the astrology first, but behind everything, there is a sole purpose or a sole mission to, to what I'm here to do. And that really is to not own the space of being the astrologer that's in the media and can cross over into the YouTube world and into all parts of, of society, really. It's not even about owning that space. It's just about stepping into that space and manifesting that space so others can be in that space, too. I mean, I, I think about Oprah and how she made, you know, Dr. Phil. And, and when, you, when you think about that, it's like, okay, a, a psychologist who has their own television show talking about psychology, right? It's like there's that whole element of, like, why isn't astrology got that same aspect. So that's why I've spent ever since reality show days and moved it in towards more of doing, you know, the TV talk show formats. And, and that's a whole separate life. And that's another reason why I want to do this show too. It's like that life is like already like a job in itself. Like, you know, being in entertainment and here in LA, it's, it's competitive. It's gnarly. It's, you know, it's not, it's not the same as like going to YouTube and just making whatever you want. Like good examples, like when I went on Steve Harvey, you know, it's like they have an idea, they, they hit you up, you work with a producer and you come up with some great things. You do lots of interviews on a webcam on Skype for them to show to the main producers, which then send it to, you know, everybody through all the channels to where it finally gets approved. And then, you know, you really don't get much of a say and then you have to know how to navigate the waters and still be deep, but still connect to people who don't know astrology. That in itself is a major job and to even get on all these shows, right? It's like not easy. It's not, it's, it's not, uh, it's not an easy task, but it's been, in my view, what is my carrot that keeps me going? So a lot of people think I'm a sellout. I get that one. I, you know what? And I, it's kind of funny because right before I did this video, Somebody had put on my YouTube, like, you're just a sellout. We could see right through you. You're not a light worker. And I was just like, wow. And I think that I want to create this show because people, people see the Leo King. And the Leo King is a character. You know, I'm David Palmer, right? So it's like the Leo King's a character that allows that role of being a, a, an astrologer and for me to express parts of myself. In, in a radical ways and to be able to really, I guess you could say it's almost like my shield to myself, right? It's like almost like putting on the, the body armor or something to go into battle of being a, an astrologer and out in the media and in the press and make predictions in magazines like in my magazine that I did last year and go on Entertainment Tonight and talk about the celebrities and wh why they're going to be breaking up or not, or if they're compatible or not. But a lot of people think that's all selling out, but it's like, how else are we going to get this space normalized, accepted, is, is, is being part of that space, you know? And I always use the analogy of being in The Matrix, the movie, uh, that Neo at the very end and the I think it's what, Matrix Reloaded, right? The third one. So uh, it's where he has to go to the main computer. Like he does not stay in Zion. Like, and, I, and I really want to put that message out there to other astrologers or tarot readers or anybody. It's like, YouTube's great. I love YouTube. It's been great for my self-expression. It's been great for me to get my information out to people. But the collective now, especially with all this Capricorn and... I just had my Jupiter return today with a solar eclipse right on my Jupiter and the Sun-Jupiter meeting on my Jupiter. That's a lot. Um, that 
you know, I feel like if there's anything that I could teach other people, or at least as a friend, or as a fellow light worker out there, that it has to be more than that. And, and that's been something that I, maybe my Jupiter and Capricorn has always been about, like building in 2014 the, the Leo King app, like knowing that horoscope videos could be sold. That was the, I was the first person in the world to literally create a daily video horoscope platform that I sold video horoscopes every day with subscription. So that was like a massive feat as well just in the fact of just having to allow astrology to be like real, like and worthy of it. Because I think, you know, it's great. And, and I've always said that putting out your best content for free is important to let people know you're the real deal. And so that's what I continue to do. But there is an aspect of it where it's like the best stuff is the daily. Or, and especially when, when you haven't missed a day in eight years coming up, it's like, wow. You know, that's a lot, but to me it's like normal life. And I feel like this show will be able to, to show people, hey, wow, this is really what's going on. This is really what's behind the scenes of Leo King. Like, it's not some, um, and, and I'm going to be very blunt here, because you all love that I'm blunt. Like, I'm not doing this out of my house all the time. Like, I, I have a full studio. Like, I kept, whenever I advanced in this position of being the Leo King or whatever, whatever you want to call this, astrologer, celebrity astrologer, because there's a lot. I'm an evolutionary astrologer. I, I really believe in so many different parts of astrology or, or implement so many different parts. But there's that whole aspect of, of, of that any time I could advance in my life, I took the next step. I expanded it. I continue to expand. I just don't I guess you could say, just sit and go, well, that was successful and I'm going to keep it this way. I get bored when it's the same way. That's why you always see the sets changing. That's why you always see over all the years, the content changing and upgrading the equipment, making 4K videos. That takes more time, but to me, it's like the art. It's the creative art that I love about this. But behind all that, you know, it's a lot of work. And to be real, I think a lot of people who follow me on Instagram, like think I'm crazy. They're like, do you ever sleep? Like, because I'm like literally up. I like, we'll, we'll just start with some basics for this first episode and then we'll get deeper in others. But so my sleep schedule is pretty weird. I think being an astrologer, number one, and a tarot reader, because I've been both and I actually, believe it or not, I was a tarot reader before I was an astrologer. Um, and that goes back to 2005. Um, there's something about the night that I do my best work. I feel like everybody being asleep allows me to tap into the universe better and I like the night. I like the day too. I love the summer. I'm a Leo. I, I'm a Leo rising. I love it. So I like to sleep between the hours of like 5 and 10. So 5 a.m. to 10 a.m. Like that's my, I'm about a five hour a night to sometimes, six hours is like perfect for me. So if I can do like 4 a.m. to 10 a.m., sometimes it might be 5 a.m. to 11 a.m. So, yeah, I typically spend my late nights chilling in my room or my living room. But I thought I'd kind of switch it up on you. You're probably like, what? We just switch things up. But yeah, so this is, this is my room where I chill. So I have my altar back there in that altar. I'll do like a little quick like look at it for you all. All the astrology books, the magic books, the alchemy books, the history stuff, a lot of them are in there. Um, I typically chill on my bed. My, my, my room is very like, I guess you could say typical like regal Leo shit. Like, I don't know. I'll, I'll do like a little pan so you can see. But I, I typically, and this is I think the main point, because I do the astrology and the horoscopes all day and, and I'm in it all the time and it's, it's crazy. I'm even recording this the day after I just did the first intro, which the moon is passing over Saturn and Pluto right now for the last time before they meet. Um, so this is December 27th at like two in the morning. But, um, you know, the thing is, is like, 
you have to disconnect from astrology every day. And so for me, I have to put myself in an environment where I don't have the work. And that was the hardest. It was learning to not do the work at home, right? Even though you're probably like, what? You're doing the work at home right now. It's like, well, this is like a little bit more carefree. You know, I'm just talking about myself and talking about my journey. But as far as like doing the astrology at home, doing readings at home all the time, doing, doing the actual videos all the time at my house, like that's where you unplug. The 10th house and the 4th house are opposite, right? So that's why we have offices in life, you know? And that's why you almost feel better coming home if you go to work because then it's like when you come home, that's your sanctuary. So for me, my sanctuary is like everything. And I, I do have a moon in Taurus, so I do like to like relax. You'd think I, I race, you know? That's a great way in my life, race jet skis. So it's like, I'm always, you know, on the road, pulling my trailer or racing or DJing at the clubs or DJing, you know, but then there's that, I need to be able to relax. And so I like to relax very moon and Taurus. Like I, my bed here, <laughs> I don't know. I even feel weird doing this video cause I'm not the kind of person that just kind of reveals my life, I guess, and how I am. Maybe because I'm just like, it's pretty simple. Um, I have a massaging bed and it reclines, right? So I recline and then you might be able to see in the frame here, but then I like OLED TVs cause I love movies. So I don't watch a lot of TV unless it's of course like a really powerful TV show. I just finished um, Man in the High Castle. I love that show, it was such a great show. But, um, I love OLED because it's organic LED light and I like to watch Dolby Vision. So if you don't know what that is, but with Apple TV 4K, you can watch movies in Dolby Vision. I've always been obsessed with electronics, but I just like to chill out and watch movies and zone out. Sometimes I'll chill in my bed and catch up on some work or, but that's pretty much what I do here in my bedroom. So I'll give you, give you all a little look, kind of at some stuff at the altar, like the books that I have. Uh, I got lions in the room. Uh, back down there is an anointing kit. That's from uh, Christy Michelle from House of Matriarch. Um, you can look her up. And she actually gave me the lions too. But um, I'm pretty boring. It, it depends. I mean, I don't know. I'm pretty tired tonight and I'm decompressing. And, and it is during a solar eclipse and it is still my Jupiter return happening right now. And I'm just kind of like, for me, it's like kind of like what's next in my life. I'm always like trying to accomplish something big in my life. And then when I come home, it's like, I process all that data. I, I relax, but I, I need time to process it. I'm somebody who processes a lot of things and I have to look in my, my, my head, I gotta look in my heart, I gotta look in my soul, I gotta feel my emotions. So I have to go through all those layers. I'm a manifesting generator, 5-1. So for me, I have to waste all my energy in order to fall asleep. I just can't just fall asleep. I mean, I can fall asleep whenever I want, if that makes sense, but like to actually get like a real good night's sleep, like I have to use all my energy, you know? And so I've had projectors in my life, you know, and, and, and that's kind of hard cause they, they need sleep all the time or they need, you know, they get really winded quick. And so for me being a manifesting generator, you know, it's like hard cause I'm always da -da 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 -da. even while I'm chilling, I'm thinking about something. I can, if, if I got a movie on or I got something to stimulate me, I'm cool. Um, I hit my jewel in my house, even though we're not supposed to. I don't care. I'm just me. And then, so I live in Marina del Rey. So what's cool is that's the harbor right there. And we have our own docks. So I can um, put my jet skis on the docks and walk right up to my place. And so the boats are all right there. I'll do a little pan for this episode too there. But uh, I do like it because when I turn all the lights off and stuff and I can lay in my bed and with it reclined, I'm like looking at the water and looking at the boats. I know it seems like Maybe that's really bougie, you know, but I think it's weird because in LA, 
I don't know. It's just like, I don't know. I work my butt off just so I could live the way that I want to live. Like, but I also, I don't know. A lot of people go, why haven't you bought a house or something? And I'm always like, I put all my money into the studios to build better content for people to make astrology better and to do things that haven't been done yet with astrology. So for me, I always invest most of my money. Of course, my moon and Taurus make sure that I'm comfortable, but then it's like all that other money goes to the work and just making the work better and constantly growing the work, which I think is super important. So yeah, these are my lions. Um, this is kind of a bedroom. I have another lion around here. Um, I always have LED lights. I'm like kind of like old school regal and then yeah, it's like, you know, making sure I got that. So that's the altar. Um, and then yeah, I guess what we could do here is, so I got a manual focus with this camera to do it in 4K. Um, what do I got in here? Oh, let's see. So yeah, these are the books that I got um, and they are just toppled everywhere. What's kind of cool about um, a lot of the stuff that I got in here is a lot of it, well not a lot of it, but some of it is Jeff Jowers who's passed away. Um, yeah, Star IQ. Um, oh man, I, I, having one hand is just not fun. Oh, hold on, here we go. There's a little, there's a little zoom. Or, where are we at? There we are, Star IQ, yeah. So, yeah, I think that's Jeff Jower's signature. Yeah, 12, 14, 86. Um, hey, Leo. I know, I, everybody's like, why don't you use autofocus while on this Panasonic the GH5, like, uh, when you're in full 4K cinema, 24P, like, it, it won't let you 10-bit. Uh, it looks like shit. <sighs> what else do I got in here? Gosh, it's so bad. I, I'm usually much more organized than this shit, but I got Templar Knights. I got... Oh, man, I got so much. Numerology. <laughs> um, I don't know. I have so much crazy crap, like... This is, I think, my grandfather's. What do you care what other people think? It's so my vibe. Uh, um, oh, my mom's in this book, Bill Phillips. Shout out to Bill Phillips, the psychic medium. Uh, her story's in this book. He's an amazing medium. These are some of the older astrology ones, too. I think these are all more Jeff Jarra books, yeah. Um... Gosh, what else do I got in here? Yeah, astro astrology, diagnosis, a guide to healing. It's another Jeff Jower book. Um, I feel bad because people are probably like, oh God, you got all his books and they're all messed up. It's because I actually use them once in a while. Of course, The Mists of Avalon. A lot of uh, the, good, the good stuff I have is at my, um, is at my office. You know. Gosh, I got so oh well of course. If you're ever gonna get into astrology, like and you don't read this book, you really don't know what you're doing. Um because if you don't know how they did it, ancient astrology practices, then you know, I don't know, you'd be missing out. So like we'll just pick a page. Why not have fun, right? Um, those who have Jupiter, oh my gosh, this is crazy because I just, this is me. Those who have Jupiter and Capricorn will be famous friends of the powerful, <laughs> keeping their secrets with silent fidelity. They will be lucky when Jupiter will have finished his second round. Oh, that's exactly what just happened to me. Before that time, 
wherever, um, whatever office the native holds, he will lose. He will be in poverty and serve low-class men as long as Saturn is crossing the second third of the same sign. Wow. That's kind of creepy. I don't even know what to say. So like we just had Jupiter and Sad, right? So, um, where is it? In the first part of their lives, they will be irresponsible and be quarreled with their wives. But when they arrive at middle age, they will end pros they will enjoy prosperity and good fortune. If Saturn is in opposition or square uh, aspect to Jupiter and Sagittarius, they will not have either wives or children, especially if Jupiter is located in the terms of Saturn. But they will be generous, agreeable, friends of many, known of all, uh, sophisticated and respectable, especially if Jupiter is located in the first house of the chart aspects, some other planets and train. Uh, this Jupiter and Capricorn thing is blowing my mind. Before that time, he would be involved in many griefs and losses, lawsuits and reverses, and will see deaths in his own family. He will have such misfortune on who he wished to be freed by death. Wow. But when Saturn has crossed the house we mentioned, all evils will be lured to sleep and the greatest good fortune will follow according to the strength and nature of the chart. Well, good thing I got a good damn fucking chart. Fuck. What did you hear about that, Leo? No more fucking horrible fortunes and shit, dog. Well, he's all running away from me. Anyway, I'll show you the rest of the spot. Oh, so... Yeah, this is like, see, OLED, there's no weird shit. I mean, I got a light in here, but like, it's super clean. That's what I like about it. It's like super clean and real. But anyway, yep, so that kind of finishes up where I, where I hang out. And then I guess, oh, that's me. Yeah, hold on, I'll turn off the light, see if we can do that. Oh, I'll go outside and fuck it. Um, yeah, so this is this is my living room. Some of you all have seen it. It's funny that you'd think I have like an Aries or something, but I have a Leo. I mean, I mean, sorry, you'd think I'd have a Leo, not an Aries uh, thing here. But um, yeah, so I got the harbor out there. This is like my bedroom. This is Leo. Oh no, it's Pee Pee. Pee Pee! My Pisces. Pee Pee! I know. And then Leo, who wants all the fucking attention in the world, always. What? Right? So, here's like a little tour of the spot. You know, I am a bachelor, so I really don't keep shit fucking here ever. Um, I don't cook much. Like, literally, I really do not. Oh, gosh, I got so much light here. It's like crazy. Like, how do I... Turn that down. No way to. It's kind of weak. Oh, here we go. There we go. Yeah, not a total bachelor. Total bachelor. Yes, I am. I got a little wine fridge, and guess what probably is in this wine fridge? You guessed it. A Sprite. And... What else is in there? Oh, we got a Sprite. What else do we got in here? We've got coconut water. That's what I use my wine fridge for. Um, yeah, pretty basic spot. But I have to have some place. Oh, this is, I'm kind of a neat freak, I'll be honest. I'm pretty OCD, um, which I know is probably not attractive to many people, but um, all right. Yeah, we got Leo. So I kick it in here. Aries, even though I'm a Leo, I thought it was badass. I always get the world. Um, 
when I was a kid, I grew up in Corona del Mar, so I was born on Avocado Street. Well, that was the house that my parents conceived me and had me. So Corona del Mar, if you know, so cow baby. Um, I chill, I watch movies out here. Oh, I got my record collection. And I kind of, I usually like candles and shit, but what are y'all doing? What are you guys doing in here, huh? What are you guys doing, huh? So, um, like, what do I got in right now? I got a little Daft Punk. Oh, yeah. You like that, Pixie? What about you, Leo? You like that? I like that. I love Daft Punk. Mm -hmm. So I, I like will just zone out of no astrology all the time. Yes. So. Yeah. That's pretty much it. I'll give you a view outside now that I got it kind of fixed. All right, so this is uh, my balcony. I keep my dining table out here. I have like a little cool area to chill at. And um, so what's pretty cool about here is um, those are the docks. That's the boathouse that I got right there. And yeah, all the boats are just here chilling. So it's pretty cool. I wake up in the morning and I'm in between two bodies of water, which is pretty chill. So I don't have to like, I guess it's good for my psychic work. I like TVs out here and shit. And um, yeah, the ecliptic goes from here all the way here. So I get the planets, which is kind of cool. But um, anyway, this is my life. And um, I do like being around the water and the palm trees. It's a whole other story though. And I, I do kind of have this weird like gardeny area here and I, I picked this because I was the first person to move here I didn't like being up there because I couldn't see the boats all I saw was the top of those buildings and it was hell so I was like fuck that I like being on the ground too I'm a social person when people walk by I say what's up 90% of the people never say hi back well thanks for joining me on uh, well the first episode of behind the throne this is my life I mean I'm just a pretty chill dude I've been behind the scenes of all of it, just trying to live my best life, seriously. And uh, I've been on my own since I left high school, so I just have always uh, just tried to live my best life, and it's weird, I like feel very secure in my life living alone. I've always lived alone in cities or whatever. I just, I think maybe the military taught me that, you know what I mean? And I kind of, well, I mean, I've been in relationships and had beautiful ones and lived together. I just, you know. When I'm not in a relationship, I don't mind being alone. I'm not one of those people who's like, oh my God, don't fuck. I can't do this. I kind of uh, enjoy my own space. I also enjoy love too. But um, yeah, so this is kind of the behind the scenes of my personal life a little bit. We're gonna test it out. We're gonna show you some cool stuff. Like at the High Vibe Studios, we're building an awesome new lounge so we can do more cool stuff where you can see behind the scenes before we do things. And I can't wait to show you behind the scenes of how I do work. I just want to show you all the cool stuff that, it's not even cool stuff to be honest, it's not even cool, it's not even cool, so just kind of a little bit more of just me, because I think people have been just seeing way too much of the Leo King projection, and then people have been just dying to just see me, and then there's been people accusing me of all this crazy shit out there in the world lately, of like, ah, it's just crazy, so I just wanted to show you that I'm, gonna, I'm fucking, I'm fucking me, I love you all, I'll see you all soon, oh, and Leo, say bye. What? 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 You saying bye? First episode? Bye? Is that what you gonna do? Hmm? Is that what you wanna do, Leo? What? What? Leo? Alright. From Leo and I, like old school days. Later.